Hello everybody, it's Kara from Wild Book Garden, and today I'm going to be going through my TBR Maybe shelf on Goodreads and um, just kind of talking about those books and making some decisions about them. So I have mentioned this shelf before, I think in passing. Um, so basically my TBR Maybe shelf is an exclusive shelf I created on Goodreads and sometimes when I hear about a book that I might be interested in, instead of saying want to read, I add it to TBR Maybe. And there's a few reasons for that. Um, maybe there are certain aspects of the premise that sound really up my alley and then others that I don't tend to like. Um, maybe I'm waiting for more reviews on it. Maybe there's like a specific like a specific thing that I'm not sure about, which I guess is kind of like the first reason I stated. So there's a couple different reasons that a book could end up on that shelf and I, I don't like having that shelf have too many books on it. Um, right now I'm at 70 and I'd really like to get it down to like 50 or fewer. I don't know if I can do that all in this video because I don't want this to be too long, but I thought it might be kind of interesting to go through some of these and just talk about my thought process um, and talk about the reasons that books might end up on that shelf. Um, there are a few of these I already know, like I can make a decision on. I'm either gonna say yes, I want to read or like take them off or whatever. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't know, I think this might be fun. Um, I'm not going to do the screen record thing just because I'm not going to talk about every single book. Um, so let's just go down the list here. Um, the first one I have is If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. This is the first book in a, it's an adult romance series that's coming out. Um, the first book is coming out later this year in August. And the reason this is TBR maybe, so this is like, I'm very particular about romances. Um, but this one does sound interesting. It's like a modern day like Cinderella retelling. It's going to be a series of fairy tale retellings that are adult romances, um, which does sound interesting. Honestly, so like, there's a couple of reasons that I have this on the maybe shelf. One is, again, I'm just very particular about romances. I probably want to wait and hear some specific reviews before I decide. Um, but also, I think that these are put out by Disney by like their publishing group or like a subsidiary of them and I just feel weird about reading adult romances about Disney characters. I know that's not something that everyone would feel weird about but it's a little weird for me so I, I haven't decided about that one. That's still on the maybe shelf but one that I am gonna say yes I want to read is Women and C.S. Lewis, What His Life and Literature Reveal for Today's Culture. Now this is one where like I might still read some more reviews before I decide to pick it up but I think I am gonna officially shelve this as want to read um, because I do enjoy C.S. Lewis's work. Um, I don't think he's like a perfect author. Like I don't always love everything about his books, but I do think he was very progressive for his time and I think some of his ideas still have a lot of resonance today. And I definitely feel very strongly that he was not a misogynist, which I think is one of the um, points this book is making. Like I know that some people are not happy with the way his female characters are done, which I get, but I personally think they are very well done. Um, Okay, so I'm adding that one. Next, I think I am going to add this one to want to read as well. That is The Madness of Lord Ian Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. This is a historical romance and I've heard just some really good things about it and specifically some things that make me think I would like it. The reason this was maybe read is because, again, I'm just very particular with romance, but I think this is like a soft hero, which I love. And I think this has like some vaguely like Beauty and the Beast vibes, maybe. Um, and I think it also has, I don't know if it's like, disability rep or like mental illness rep or something like that but I've heard um I've heard that that's handled very well so I am going to read that one this other one I definitely want to read is The Coming of Age of Elizabeth Bennett A Pride and Prejudice Variation by Caitlin Williams I um heard about this from Misty at Book Rat Misty and she was talking about how like she could see it not working for a lot of people but um and be one she's she'd be really interested to like do a group read for because she thinks people like she just thinks it'd be a really good one to discuss um and the thing that made me hesitant about this one is i think one of the main things that misty was talking about which is like it's an alternate version of pride and prejudice where i think darcy ends up um as being kind of like the guardian of the like longborn estate or like kind of like nominally elizabeth bennett's like the bennett girls um not guardian exactly but like what's it called in in that time period what was it called i guess kind of like they're his wards but i don't think i hope it's not gonna make it feel creepy that was the that was the thing i was a little hesitant about but i'm really interested to see how it plays out i think it would be an interesting character dynamic and the only thing i'm worried about is that like it would feel a little too much like he's her legal guardian which is weird um but i hopefully it won't go that way this next one i'm not ready to make a decision on but i am interested in more reviews and that is excuse me while i ugly cry by joya goffney or hoya goffney um <laughs> i love this title first of all and that's one of the things that like attracted me to this book because i feel like i've said this to people at some point um like these exact words and the reason this one is on the maybe shelf is because even though the premise sounds really fun it sounds like an interesting character dynamic it's one of those like so the main character her list of greatest fears or something gets leaked 
and then somebody like she's trying to get it back and then this boy ends up helping her but he's like in the process he's like making her confront some of her fears or something and the reason I'm hesitant is because this this premise or these kinds of premises I just don't love because a lot of times or I should say I don't often love them because a lot of times it ends up feeling like oh you think you know who you are this random stranger <laughs> knows better what's good for you than you do like I'm not gonna listen to what makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe because I know better um so I'm hoping that that is not the way that one would go but I do want to hear more reviews before I commit to reading that one um let's see next is Wendy Darling by AC Wise this is a Peter Pan retelling and I think I think the reason this was a maybe is because some of the reviews mentioned the writing not being great. I forget what it was. There was something specifically about the writing that made me like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to get on with this, but I'm going to go ahead and say want to read because I am curious <laughs> and I can enjoy some Peter Pan retellings. I also, I should have mentioned at the beginning of um, the video, but one of the primary reasons that I really like having this shelf is it's a way for me to keep uh, keep track of books even if I'm not 100% sure I want to read them. Because let's say I decide later I want to read a book. If I haven't marked it, sometimes I can't find the book again, which is very frustrating and stressful. Um, so this is another reason it's good to have this shelf. And then this one I'm actually going to take off my TBR. This is For the Wolf by Hannah F. Witten. I had kind of like mentally taken this off my TBR recently, but I'm now officially doing it on camera. Um, and that is because, although I've heard very good things for it overall, the vibes of the summary are just kind of making me... I don't know, it sounds a little bit like Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which we all know I did not enjoy. And also I think there's a lot of like blood and like self-harm type of magic. Um, Cousin from Always Doing mentioned that in her review and um, that's not something I really want to read. So I'm going to take that one off my TBR. Although my friend Huck mentioned she's going to read it soon, so if she loves it, maybe it'll go back on the TBR, but for now, no. Um, let's see, A Wild Winter Swan by Gregory Maguire. This is a really low average rating, but the reason I'm still intrigued... Um, is I'm pretty sure this is a Nutcracker retelling or a Swan Lake retelling or something. I think, and I, I love ballet retellings. I don't think there's enough of them. So even though I've only read one Gregory Maguire book and I was pretty like middle of the road about it, I I don't know if I'm ready to commit to want to read. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off on that one. Even though my love for ballet makes me want to add it, I'm gonna hold off. Okay, this next one, this is a gorgeous cover, so I'm kind of sad about it, but I think I'm going to take off King of the Hollow Dark by Kat Hellison. Now, I have really enjoyed some things by Kat Hellison before. Um, when the Sea is Rising Red is really good, and I really love the sequel, which is... Oh gosh, I can't remember... I can't remember what the sequel's called, but I really enjoyed that one. Um, and I and I love Beast Keeper. I, it's such a weird book, but I adore it. Um, and I definitely want to read more from her, but I think I'm going to take this one off because it has to do with necromancy. And I just don't like that in fantasy. Um, I don't know, like the main character is not a necromancer, but she is the daughter of one. And I think, um, oh wait, okay, but some of this sounds really interesting. She's apparently gonna like return the king of death to the throne. Um, there's like a, she's like, an, the main character finds out she's an immortal body designed to host the soul of an eons old goddess. This sounds really interesting. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave it on the TBR maybe shelf and wait for more reviews. Um, let's see. Okay, another one that I'm not sure about is My Eyes Are Up Here by Laura Zimmerman. Um, this sounds really, this sounds like a really important, like, body positivity book, but I know Ashley from Bookish Realm read it and enjoyed it, but she did have a couple of, like, um, issues with it, and I think there are things that would bother me too, so I'm also gonna wait to make a decision on that one. Okay, next is Catch and Kill, Lies, Spies, and a Conspiracy to Protect Predators by Ronan Farrow. I'm gonna add this to want to read. Um, this is gonna be a really difficult nonfiction book to read. It's about, um, I think it's specifically about the um, Weinstein um, sexual assault cases. And My Name is Muddiness really, really thought this book was fantastic. This is one that I, I've been thinking for a while. I probably will put it on the want to read shelf. It's just a matter of when I'll get to it, um, of like when I'll actually pick it up to read. Um, but yes, I do want to read that one. Let's see. Okay, here's one. Under My Hat, Tales from the Cauldron. This is a collection of short stories. And the reason that I added this in the first place is because Frances Harding has a story here. And we know I adore Frances Harding. Um, oh, Holly Black also has one. And Peter S. Beagle and some other... Um, authors I really know about or enjoy. Um, so it's a collection about witches. I... 
I don't know, it doesn't have great reviews and I am pretty particular about short story collections, so maybe I'll hold off on reading that one, although I'm sure at some point I will at least read Francis Harding's story. Um, let's see. Okay, also I think I am going to add The Fuck It Diet, Eating Should Be Easy by Caroline Dooner. So this is a book that is really attacking um, how dangerous and harmful and useless diet culture is, um, and it's about, uh, it does like address the health at every size movement, um, and it's gotten like pretty good reviews. I don't think it's like, it looks like it's not like a favorite for people, but it is a good kind of starting point or like reference point, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that one. Okay, A Threat of Grace by Mary Doyer Russell. Now this is a book, this is so funny that I still have it on this shelf because I, th I think I actually own this book. I got it very cheap um, somewhere and you guys might remember that I really hated The Sparrow by Mary Doyer Russell, which is a very famous science fiction novel. I hated that book, but this is a historical fiction book and I think I'm gonna like this one more. It sounds really interesting. Um, it's a World War II historical fiction, which is not like one of the areas that I read most of my historical fiction in, but um, it sounds really interesting. It's based on a true story of, I think it's like this small Italian village that helped rescue thousands of Jewish refugees and um, yeah, like so I'm gonna go ahead and say want to read because I already own this one and it's such a different premise that I'm hoping that I like this a lot more than the other book I've read by this author. Ooh, okay, so next is Death and the Dancing Footman by Niall Marsh. Um, this is number 11 in the Roderick Allen mystery series and I have known for a while now that I wanted to, um, like I'm gonna take this book off but I'm gonna add the first book in the series because my friend Olivia Savannah has been really enjoying these mysteries. She's actually the one who like put this book on my radar and as she read more of them I was like, yeah, this definitely sounds like something I would like. Um, I don't read a ton of like just plain mystery genre, but these sound really good. I think I'm gonna really like the main character. And I know Ellie from Earl Grey Books also had like read the first book and really enjoyed it. Really looking forward to getting to that one. Okay, next is a manga, A Silent Voice Volume 1 by Yoshitoki Oima. Um, and I'm gonna say want to read because I think Ashley from Bookish Film, I think she recently was talking about this series. So the reason I was a little hesitant about this one is because the female main character, um, I believe she's deaf and this boy has had been one of the people who bullied her for that at school, but I think at the start of this no of, of this graphic, not graphic novel, manga, excuse me, um, I think at the start of this manga he has like apologized and he's like trying to like make amends and like become friends with her. So I wasn't in love with the bullying aspect being part of the premise, but I think it sounds like it handles it well and I know people who have really enjoyed that one, so I'm gonna say I want to read that one. Okay, um, I did not nearly remove as many as I was hoping to, or not remove, but like move to want to read or take off my shelves entirely. Let's see how many books I still have on this shelf. 60. Okay, so I decided about 10 of them. You know, that's probably a good number to stop at for one video, um, but that's just kind of like my thought process for my TBR maybe shelf. Um, I know other people have kind of a shelf like this, so this is not like I invented this concept, but I just thought it might be kind of interesting to talk about the reasons books can end up there or get moved off of that shelf. Please comment down below and let me know if you have kind of a like halfway um, shelf or some way of keeping track of books that you're like, maybe, but I'm not sure. Um, and also comment and let me know if like any of the books that I was having trouble deciding on, um, let me know if you have opinions on them. I would love to know that. That might help me decide on some of these. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye.